guys, Forty Nerd here, back with another video. I am so excited that you guys were really loved the video that I posted today, which was the video on 10 ways to improve your FLF skills. In fact, you guys did so well on it and you, so many people liked it that I decided to turn this into a series. And today, we'll be looking at these top 10 pieces that you really need for FLL. Now, I made a Lego pieces you need for FLL before, but I am a changed competitor, and it's ever since Spike Prime, and I didn't consider motors for 10 Lego pieces you need. I also didn't include systems. So there's a lot that's new in this video, and I highly recommend you check it out and watch through the entire thing because there's something special at the end. So without further ado, let's get right into this. And here we are. Like I said in my FLO skills video, I like the use of half beams. Cue the clip right here where I used a half beam to complete the slide figure mission, getting us a 20 easy and reliable points. This is a pneumatic valve turning system, also a worm gear drive that uses these half pieces as a thing to keep it together. Because although you might say, wait a minute, how would you use a half piece in this scenario? There's, it's a whole piece. The reason I use this is because this half piece isn't available in whole piece form. It's only available as these half pieces, as you can see the difference between the colors. Also, I use half pieces in my worm gear drives. Credit to BuilderDude35 for an easy worm gear drive video. But here it is. I use these half pieces in the worm gear drive. And this, you can see the individual pieces. It's super compact, but also strong if you support it. At the number eight position, Lego pneumatics. Honestly, this should probably be in the 10th position because this doesn't apply for everyone. It's pretty expensive and it's pretty complicated, but Lego pneumatics is super useful because not only do you get an easy piston, but you can also store air in it. So you can, in an air tank, so you can pump it previously. And since you will use a worm gear valve drive, if you use the same one I have, there's no risk of it turning in competition until your robot turns it as there would with a super heavy rotary thing, which is why I recommend pneumatics for some of the heavier lifting missions. This won't apply to everyone, but if you want to see my Lego pneumatics video, you can check that out just by looking an introduction to Lego pneumatics on the Wordy Nerd 48 channel. There's also other great videos to introduce you to pneumatics. Now it's time for a big question everyone has. What are the best wheels? As you, if you, as if you watch my best wheels for your FLO robot video, I said these wheels were the best wheels because this length happens to snap to the axle, where if you use the smooth one that is in the regular EV3 set, it just, your robot will either end up leaning down or leaning up, depending on whether, how you put your caster wheel down, at least with the ball caster. But this is the best ball caster, as I said, in my best caster wheel for your FLO robot. However, I have to change my decision because now Spike Prime came out. These aren't actually the wheels from the kit. I just stole this off the rowing machine, but I gotta tell you, Spike Prime wheels are amazing. They did a great job with this. Although they don't have as much grip, the FLL board is very smooth, so you really don't need that much grip. You just need enough to keep it on, and there's enough to keep it on. Not only do they have a slimmer design and they actually snap to the wheels because this is about one stud long and this is about one stud long. I think first, or the Lego, really saw the problem with the EV3 base set wheels because the problem with those was that they didn't really snap to the length. So your robot would always be leaning down or leaning up. But now these, you can get a perfectly straight robot. This I had to buy online in order to have my robot perfectly flat. But now, but as you can see, this is super spongy. Now we have a hard, good gripped wheel that you can use for FLL robots. And although I'm not competing next year, I plan to make a video on the best possible FLL robot using the best pieces that I can find. I might add an extra medium motor or use it for different accounts, like if you only have one base set. But this will probably go into my best FLL robot design because I gotta tell you, this is amazing. I would say it's next to the best wheel. I think it's almost the best wheel, except maybe the Spike Prime version of the tall wheel. And here we are at sensors. Sensors are extremely important and color sensors are no exception. I know many teams use line following, but two color sensors can be amazing in so many different ways. The set only comes with one, but with two color sensors, you can follow both sides of a line 
And the way that works is one follows this side, and one follows this side. Whereas with a one sensor line follower, you would end up snapping off usually at this, unless you have a very good perfected line follower. But with two, there's no risk because they're always staying on ex both sides of the line. To, and you can also put them at different positions of the robots. I've seen teams put them on the diagonals, one in the front, one in the back. They, there's just so many ways you can get creative with them to help your turns and your line following become better. This is also a sensor, and it's right here. I couldn't take it out because it's pretty deep into my robot, but it is the gyro sensor. The gyro sensor, you can also see the XU when it's shaped like this. But the gyro sensor is extremely useful in FLL for so many different reasons. For starters, you can use it to turn. Accurate turning is very important for FLL, and since the gyro is essentially a compass, it works very well with turning. You can also make a gyro straight, because when the gyro detects any tilt in your robot, it can, it can, you can make a program to correct it and make your robot drive in a straight line, which is super useful, especially for a long path. Like if you want to get your robot from the base to the treadmill, that would take forever because the treadmill is all the way back there. However, if you use the gyro straight, you wouldn't be scared of your robot going off because again, it's just traveling in a straight line. I plan to make a programming series just for the gyro and the color sensor because they're both super useful sensors to use in FLL and a lot of teams use them. And I thought I might as well give some tips as to how to use it. Although I know a lot of other creators have done their way, but I think my way is more simple and it's probably easy for beginner teams to implement into their robot. In the number three position, these linear beams. Now, what they're actually called is called tooth racks, but when they're paired with the pinion gear, they're actually called a rack and pinion. And the pinion gear also happens to be a gear I use a lot. And this is why. This is a rack with its pinion gear. And this is a rack and pinion gear inside a small system. Essentially what this does is when this rotates, it moves this bar up and down or side to side. It turn, it's a linear actuator, turning rotary motion into linear motion. Now this is super useful for one of two things. I know many fancy teams or more experienced teams like to have this as a kind of system to go out and really kind of send out a bar to complete a mission. But the other reason this can be useful is for lifting objects. Let's go to one of my attachments. For example, say you wanted to complete the aim and fire. All your robot would have to do is simply walk up to here and then raise the bar using a rack and pinion type device. And although this made it in the goal this time, I understand that this isn't the most reliable way to solve it, but I couldn't find a more reliable way to solve it because any other way kind of just makes the robot too wide because we do want to fit through the gap right here to complete other missions. As you can see, when I'm lowering and raising the bar, the bar moves. And that's because there is a gear right there moving the bar, which comes from here. This small gear turns a large gear, which if you read my introduction to gears or watched that video, you would know that that dramatically, drastically increases the power. So now, if my robot was to come to the weight machine and try and lower it, it can do it so with ease because this rack and pinion has so much power. An important thing to note when using a rack and pinion type system is the support on the rack and pinion because you do need an area for your lifting object which is this, because otherwise you just have a bar going up and down. But the problem is that can also get in the way of support because if you don't support it, the beam can fall out the back, it can switch to the sides, or it can fall out the front. The way we chose to tackle this was we had this, and I built this little part right here which in these two one by ones, which keeps it in. The other way I decided to solve this was to put one large beam here, which gets completely like just disregarded by this because by the time it hits here, the beam's already gone. I'll probably make a video on this type of linear actuator soon because I know a lot of teams want to see it. But for now, let's get into the top two. In second place as the most important resource for FLL 
is your second medium motor. I do not know why, but for some reason, Lego decided that a second medium motor just wasn't necessary, and they didn't put it in the set, or at least not the set that I got, which was the 31313. And the reason this infuriates me so much is because you need an EV3 for FLL, or you could, I guess you could use Spike Prime or NXT, but if you're buying the EV3 set and you want to use it for FLL, you just got to have a second medium motor. It, it helps you so much. The first year I did FLL, I, as myself, only had one medium motor. Now, that was a little bit of a problem because the Into Orbit set is huge and you need multiple motors to complete missions. If you look at really good teams on YouTube, they all have two medium motors. And the reason they have that is because in a two minute and 30 second run, you wanna maximize your time. The problem is when you're running around a field like this, there's so many missions to complete. And in the end, you can only complete so many. And with one run, if you only have one motorized part of your attachment in order to complete a mission, then you're only getting half of what you could be getting in that mission. I mean, disregarding passive techniques, but you're only getting half of the motors. And that's just not okay when you have four motor slots. A second medium motor isn't too expensive. And if you have the funding, and especially if you want to get really good at FLL, just get a second medium motor. I'm just, trust me here, it'll pay off tremendously. Although a second medium motor can widen your robot and make some designs impossible, the other reason it's good is because with a singular medium motor, you're just going to put it right here. But that's just wasting as much space as two when you could have two because you're putting one in the middle instead of two on the sides. With one medium motor, there is the option of using one motor and then using gears to split the power over to all parts of the robot. But the problem with that is because it's only one motor, then you would be turning one thing and it would turn everything on your attachment at once. And that can be a problem for many teams. So I highly recommend you just get two medium motors. Just trust me on this one, it'll pay off. Now, at this point, with all the stress about a medium motor, what do you think I'm gonna put as the most important resource for FLL? Well, think no longer because I'm, gonna about, I'm about to tell you, but the most important resource for FLL is your brain. Just like the EV3 has his brain, you also have yours. And your brain is your most important resource for FLL. Tutorials on YouTube, countless books, summer programs, school programs, they all exist. Trial and error, you can learn yourself. There is a way to learn yourself without a teacher. And I think the best way to learn for FLL is to always improve your FLL brain. I make tutorials in the off season. I also make tutorials in this season. And a, a, a lot of other creators do too. Watching these videos, it may not seem improvement at once, but that's what I thought when I was scoring two points in every run. But you know what? I got better over the years. All you have to do is look for the next goal. Just keep improving. Because if you're not improving, then you're just staying at the same spot. Then what's the point really? You just came and you left. I always said, you go on to leave with something that you didn't come with. So in FLL, that logic stays the same. Look at this board, look at the missions around you. Think about in innovative solutions to complete it. And if you can't figure it out, then maybe you could go browse YouTube and you could find some team who found a really creative way to, to implement it. And then you might think, wow, this is a great design. I think I could make this into my robot. And then, although you probably shouldn't copy their design, it would be great if you just took it for inspiration. When I was a young team member in FLO, I always looked at other YouTubers for inspiration. And now I feel like I'm that one and it feels really good. Sharing things on YouTube is also really great. People give you helpful feedback and you can share it to the world, which is your impact on the FLL community. Give back if you take any. And I highly recommend you post at least a video on YouTube of your team running. If you don't, that's fine, but it's a super useful resource. That's just at your hands. YouTube is free. And so are other many streaming websites where people co create cool robots where you can take inspiration from. Thank you guys for watching this week's video of the Wordinger 48 channel. And I'll be signing off now.